Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and today I have a set of two tags and a pillow box created with some of the new winter 2015 Lawn Fawn stamps and dies. And I've used lots of the new products to create these cute little gift giving items. I'm going to start with my pillow box die. I'm going to take some of the new Let's Boca in the Snow 6x6 pattern paper. This is the red on red tonal stripe. And I'm going to die cut that using the pillow box die. Go ahead and set that aside. And then I'm going to use the Santa's Bellies belly dies and die cut that from some those pieces from specialty paper. I'm going to die cut the belt from some black foil paper. And I'm going to use some snips scissors to cut apart my dies. These make it so much easier to cut apart all of these, the dies that come all connected one to another. Go ahead and die cut that belt then. I like to save as much of my specialty paper as possible, so I try to die cut that right along the edge. Next, for the trim that is going to go, oh, I guess I'll do the belt buckle first. This is a scrap of gold foil paper. You can see it's been used quite a few times. I'm going to go ahead and die cut that buckle there. I love that I can get so many die cuts from one 6x6 six six sheet of paper this way. Then I'm going to die cut the trim that's going to go along the top and bottom of the pillow box as well as down the center from some white flocked cardstock. This is cardstock I've had in my stash forever. I don't know if it's still available or not. This is from Doodlebug. I just love the texture of it. I know you can get some that might have a flocked design. I don't know if they have this solid flocking anymore. I'm going to die cut those two pieces once. And then I'm going to die cut the trim there one more time so that I can have trim along both the top and bottom of my pillow box. You can get tons of different designs with these pillow box dies. You could even use these pieces with other dimensional gift packaging dies from Lawn Fawn if you wanted to. I'm going to add some adhesive along that flap there, fold my pillow box into shape. Then I'm going to just fold in all of these tabs. You can see they fold really easily once you have the pillow box put together. I'm going to go ahead and open it up flat again. This is going to make it easier to attach all of these decorative pieces. Again, I'm using a nice strong adhesive. I like the glue glider Permatac adhesive for this. It holds really well. And I'm going to attach the white trim along the top and bottom of the box. Now, I wish I would have attached the white trim that goes down the center of the box first, but I didn't, and so I kind of had to pop it up, which I don't really like to do because it could tear the paper. This adhesive is strong enough that I have had trouble with it in the past where it's torn paper. Luckily, this time it didn't, but I would definitely recommend if you're going to use a really strong adhesive like this, to attach that straight piece first. I wasn't even thinking. I was so excited to put this cute little scallop trim on that I went ahead and did it. And then I had to kind of lift it up. You'll see that here in a second once I get the second trim on. Go ahead and lay that right along that score line. Just pop up that end and hide it, that little notch right underneath that. Here's where I realized that I made that little error. So again, I'm going to place my adhesive there. I'm going to carefully pop that up. And you want to center that also with the score line so that it's not too long. Because I got it a little too long here and I had to pop it back up and adjust it a little bit. But there we go. There is the center of the cute pillow box die. Go ahead and score the belt. I'm going to add, add some adhesive behind that and glue that in place. Make sure all my adhesive is hidden. Line that up right in the center. I'm going to flip it over so I can get that right in between the two score lines. And then flip the belt over and secure that in place. 
And then I'll place some adhesive on the back of the gold foil belt buckle and I'll glue that in place as well. Once I have that done, I can fold it all in and my pillow box is finished. You could even add a tag if you wanted to to that. So super cute, super easy. These would make wonderful little Christmas party favor boxes as well. Now for the winter alpaca tag, I am die cutting the largest stitched circle tag die from one of the Let's Boca in the Snow Pattern papers. Also some of that white flocked paper again and some just basic white cardstock. I like to make my tags nice and sturdy, so a lot of times I will adhere one the tags back to back, which is what I'll do with the pattern paper and the white one, and that way it's gonna make it much sturdier. From the flocked tag, I'm gonna take a stitched hillside border. I'm gonna pick one of these out here that I like the shape of the hill just tape it in place with a little post-it tape and then run that through the Sizzix Big Shot and that's gonna give a nice little snowy border or hill for the alpaca to stand on. Now because this was some flocked paper, I wasn't sure how it would be stamped on so I tried something a little new and I did stamp one of the greetings on that flocked paper and it worked pretty well so I was really happy with how that turned out and you'll see that here in just a little bit. I'm going to take the rest of the scrap of Nina Solar White cardstock, stamp the alpaca right on that, and color it in with Copic markers. I'm using some warm grays as well as an E as E43 and a little R20 for the cheek too. Go ahead and color in the body first with a nice overall warm gray zero zero and then I'm going to add dot detail to give the illusion of fur with my warm gray two, warm gray one, and even E43. The dots really give that illusion that he's nice, so nice of uh, that nice uh, soft fluffy fur. Blend any of those colors out that maybe got a little too dark with a lighter color. Go ahead and color in the face. Again, I'm just kind of sticking to these same colors. Once I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and color in the scarf with R24 and R46. That adds that nice pop of color. I tried to keep with the red and white color scheme throughout all three projects that I'm sharing in this video today. I really loved the red from the papers in the 6x6 paper pad and I think it would be fun to do that with maybe all of the colors. You could kind of do, you know, several green tags or something like that, the blue. Very, very fun. I tend to like to color coordinate my pro projects like this. So there is my alpaca die cut with the coordinating winter alpaca die. I'm going to use the lobster ink and stamp that right on that flocked paper. And since it's a solid flocked paper, it did stamp really nicely. I'm going to take a little heart from the winter alpaca stamp set and stamp that below the alpaca my scarf. The greeting is going to read, baby it's cold outside, alpaca my scarf. I love the little play on words. I think that's kind of cute and fun. Stamp that heart right there. Go ahead and take the black licorice dye ink. I'm gonna stamp it a couple times to make sure that it's gonna stamp nice and cleanly. And then I'm gonna start at the bottom. That way I don't run out of room to stamp this greeting. And I'll stamp the word outside first. Go ahead and switch to my next greeting. Ink it up. This is the It's Cold. I'm gonna line that up right above outside and stamp that. Go ahead and clean off this greeting. And then I will take the baby. Again, stamp it off a couple times. Line that up and stamp that right above. And now I'm ready to basically put together the tag. This is all of the elements. On the back, before I put it together, I will stamp the to and from. 
from one of the or from the birthday tags stamp set. I stamped that with the lobster ink and I'm going to add detail to the eye of the alpaca and to the scarf using Sakura gel pens. Then all I have to do is put the whole thing together. Go ahead and attach my little winter snow, attach the alpaca with some glue dots and then glue the front and back of the tag together and finish with some red sparkle lawn trimmings twine. And that is that tag all put together. This would be a great one to do um, assembly line style as well and do a whole bunch of them. This is a little bit more involved tag. This is going to be a shaker tag. I think these are especially fun for maybe kids. Not only will it make a good tag for a gift, but it could be used as a tree ornament then after the gift has been given. So it's kind of maybe like two gifts in one. I used yet another 6x6 pattern paper in those red on red tones and I am die cutting using the Ready Set Snow Shaker add-ons and I have die cut the background with the solid shaker die and then with the frame die I'm going to die cut that from that white flocked paper. I'm going to die cut the solid die again from white cardstock and a transparency. And then I'm going to glue my frame from the flocked paper to my transparency die cut. And that's going to be the front of the shaker tag. That red pattern paper is going to be the back. And then the white is really just going to serve to add some stability to the tag and to give a nice white surface again to stamp to and from. I am going to stamp the two snowman images from the Ready Set Snow stamp set. I'm using the Memento Tuxedo Black ink here on a scrap of Nina White Solar White cardstock. I'm going to use the exact same colors minus the E43 to color in my snowman or snowmen and the cute little sign that'll go along the bottom of the shaker. Just keeps everything easy. I already have the colors out on my desk and makes it makes everything coordinate really nicely. I'm using those warm grays for the white on the snowmen, making sure to keep to very, very light warm grays. You don't want to add too much color and make them look too dingy or anything like that. Little R20 for the cheeks and then R24 and R46 for the earmuffs and scarfs and hat. Just very, very little bits of blending. These are very small images, so they don't require a ton. Keep them very similar. Again, just blending those a little tiny bit. If it blends out too much, go back in and add a little more R46. Adding some detail to the scarves again with my white gel pen. And then a little orange with YR68 for the noses to really make those pop and to complete them. And then I'll color in the sign with R24, 46, and 39 this time. It's a much bigger area and I wanted to add even more depth and dimension and shading with the darkest red color there. Blend that all out really nicely. And then die cut all of those with the coordinating Ready Set Snow dies. I also die cut the smaller stitched circle die and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that. That's This is going to make the, this shaker a tag or an ornament. Adding detail to the eyes and the buttons on the snowman with a black gel pen. And then I'm ready to stamp the to and from again using the Lobster Lawn Fawn ink. Grab those back out. I put them away. I forgot that I wanted to stamp to and from on the back of the, this shaker. Ink that up. Stamp those right there on the back. And then I can start putting it all together. I can go ahead and adhere the pattern paper directly to the back of my shaker now. I'm going to sandwich then this tag in between and that's going to give me that nice little topper to thread my ribbon through or the twine. Go ahead and 
glue down that snow also from the flocked cardstock that's from the ready set snow shaker add-on glue that in place make sure that it's where it needs to be and then I can glue the sign along the bottom of the snow globe shaker I'm using some glue dots to do that they're nice strong adhesive I want to make sure everything sticks and when you're adhering something to flocked paper sometimes it's hard to get it to stick so I like to use a nice strong adhesive again adding some detail with my black glaze pen use some glue dots to attach the snowmen inside the shaker line those up get those placed that looks good so I'll go ahead and do the other one right next to the first one and then I can add foam adhesive to the back of the front of the frame going to double up the scotch foam adhesive and then take a powder tool so that the beads don't stick to the inside of that adhesive there I'm going to fill the shaker with pretty pink posh sparkling clear and marshmallow sequins just a few of those white remove the adhesive and then take the back of the frame to the rest of it thread in some of that red sparkle lawn trimmings twine through the top and that is going to finish off this shaker gift tag ornament thanks for watching this video showcasing new winter 2015 lawn fawn stamps and dies used to create gift tags as well as a pillow box gift box the supplies I've used to create these projects are listed and linked below the video on YouTube. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.